Hey guys, Crazy Dave here. Hey, a bunch of you were sending me messages through Facebook and messengers and through YouTube and so on, asking me how hard or how easy is it to build the dry age refrigerator that I did. So I'm gonna show you in this video, a kind of a pictorial, and I'm gonna narrate this thing to show you exactly what I did and how easy it is for under 300 bucks you can make your own dry age fridge. That's a heck of a lot better than some of the other stuff out there. Stay tuned. Okay guys, so what's the first thing you need? Is a mini fridge. Now this one I picked up at Costco for about 150 bucks. You always wanna make sure your fridge does not have the freezer unit inside. So try to get one that is just a refrigerator only. Now here is my eye grill. Uh, thermometer. Now this one here has two probes and both probes are inside the refrigerator. It doesn't hurt to have a lot of different thermometers so you can kind of get an average of what's going on inside the refrigerator. Now here's a picture of my complete setup. You'll see the different thermometer gauges, the humidity gauges, the fan, the UVC light, and the charcoal filters over there on the door. And right now, I'm actually dry aging two ribeye roast. Now over here, there's been a lot of discussion. Some guys say yes, some guys say no. I strongly advise yes. And this is extra large charcoal activated fish filters that I have in my door. It doesn't help to purify the air and make it still smell good because you don't want that smelly smell. Now here is one of the hydrometers also known as a humidity gauge. I picked this up over at PetSmart for about five or six bucks. Most pet stores have them in the reptile section. Now this one here is just a regular standard uh, refrigerator thermometer. Again, this one here just allows me to open the refrigerator and I can still check the temperature and get an average idea. Again, doesn't hurt to have too many of them. Now this one here is a digital combo one. This one here measures the humidity as well as the temperature. What's really cool is over here on the right hand side, you'll see that it gives you an average of both the high and the low, so you really know what's happening to your meat. Now this one here, a lot of people were asking, well what is this and how did I hook it up? This is a USB mini fan that actually hooks up into the UVC light that's over there in the back behind. Now the UVC light basically purifies the air and the fan draws that now purified air and circulates it throughout the refrigerator. Now this UVC light has a USB port that the USB fan plugs into. Now this is called the Dry Mate, I believe. I do apologize if I'm missaying it. But this is a really cool item. One of the other members on a couple of forums recommended this. And this is what they use in cigars and it controls or helps control the humidity. So far, I like the performance of those. Now this has been a topic of discussion, the cord. How did I do it? Well, this is an appliance flat wire. It's three wires. And I do recommend that you do use three wires because you want to ground because you are dealing with a moist environment and you don't want to get shocked touching the refrigerator. Now as you can see, I ran it through the door. I did not cut the wires. So I ran one side through the door and then I attached the female plug and I finished off inside the refrigerator. And that's how you solve that problem. Now this is the tray of Himalayan rock salt. I do recommend to, you know, put in, you know, good handfuls inside of a glass dish. And then on top of that, I have a Teflon coated cookie sheet or cooling rack that I picked up from Walmart. Now on this one here, I also have a block or a full block of Himalayan sea salt. So I'm testing them both out. Which one's better, the block or the granulation version? Now here coming up is a closer view of that Teflon coated baking cooling sheet that I again picked up at Walmart. And I have actually got about two of these. 
And as you can see, it does a pretty good job. And because it's Teflon coated, the meat doesn't stick to it. Well, thanks for watching. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and like us here on Facebook at Crazy Dave's Kitchen and A Little Coffee Bean.